Hi class, this is Hector Nunez. I want to go over really quickly how to use or insert a table of contents using Microsoft Word. So I pulled up an old paper uh, that I worked on some time ago. And what I want to do is I want to use this paper now that it's written and I want to insert a table of contents. So to do so, I first need to define what areas I want to uh, have show up on my table of contents. In this S or in this type of paper and in yours as well, I don't recommend going anything uh, past perhaps heading two. You can go up to heading three if you'd like, uh, but heading one and heading two should be sufficient. Notice also that I use the title of the paper at the top, uh, right at the very beginning of this paragraph. Uh, when I do that, I, I won't typically include this in a table of contents just because it's the introductory and it's self-explanatory. Additionally, I start off with the first major header uh, right below it. So I have a short introduction and then I go right into the first major header. Um, one thing to keep in mind is that when you go to the styles, so if you're on the home tab of Word and you come over here to the right, you'll see that the styles are defined. And really we're looking at heading one and heading two. But if you click on those, um, without first modifying them, uh, you're going to end up getting a change in font color, which is going to make your paper non-APA compliant. So to fix that, um, I'm going to highlight my first level header here, and then I'm going to right click on heading one, and I'm going to say update heading one to match selection. So what you'll notice is that heading one now matches what I currently have formatted on the paper. I'm then going to go to heading or to my second level heading, I'm going to highlight it. I'm going to go to heading two, right click, and again, I'm going to update heading two to match selection. Now, all I need to do is go through and make sure these are selected. So that's heading one. That's going to be uh, heading two. I'm going to go through now. I'm just going to highlight everything that I want to show up, and that's a level two heading. So again, we'll go with heading two, and really quickly here, and all I'm doing is highlighting and just making sure that Word knows what level heading it is. That I'm also going to want to do, I'm going to take this references, because I want the references to show up um, in my table of contents. But notice that references is not really bold. It's, it's typically uh, written in just regular, uh, regular text-centered uh, Times New Roman 12-point font. So I'm going to go ahead and select that as heading 1, and, and you'll see that it goes bold. And I'm just going to unbold that. It'll keep it as heading one, um, but it just won't show up bold, and it'll keep me uh, within the APA parameters um, that I'm looking for. Um, and now I'm going to go ahead and insert a table of contents. So first thing I'm going to do is just going to hit Enter right here, and we'll go back and fix that. I'm going to use my up arrow, and then I'm going to hit Backspace to make sure I'm all the way to the left here. I'm going to go to the References tab, and once I'm on the References tab, I'm going to go to the Table of Contents. And I'm going to click that Table of Contents, and you'll see I have a couple different options um, as to you know what kind of Table of Contents I want to use. And I'm just going to select this one right here because it already says Table of Contents. It's it's spelled out pretty well, so I'm going to hit um, OK. Now keep in mind that it's going to use whatever your default or your default Font is. So if it's not Times New Roman uh, with appropriate size, you may need to go in there and uh, reformat the font. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. And you'll notice that once I did that, I automatically uh, came in here and it, everything that I had selected, including my references. Um, so I now have a uh, level one, level two table of contents. Now, I also know that uh, again, the blue font, that's not, that's not really APA style. Um, so I can, I can go in there and I can fix that pretty easily uh, just by selecting Times New Roman um, 12. And I would probably want to center my table of contents here. Um, I can go into my paragraph settings and make sure that my before and afters are set correctly and that it's double spaced. Um, to ensure APA compliance, and then lastly, uh, the font color, I'm going to change that to automatic. So there you have it. Um, so now you have an automatic 
table of contents that has been generated into your paper. Um, and now the last thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to move this to the next page because you don't want this starting um, on the same page as your table of contents. So I'm going to go to insert um, and I'm going to just insert a page break there and you'll see that I'm now on a new page. So in this case, and I haven't written my abstract yet, so I have my, uh, my title page, my table of contents, and then it goes uh, right into my paper. And uh, so this right now is um, how to easily put in a table of contents. The nice thing about this as well is that once you have it in there, um, you can actually control click and it'll take you uh, to that portion of the, um, of the paper. Now, suppose that uh, while editing, and I'm just going to, uh, you would never insert a, a page break here, but let's say that just while editing, um, you know, we type some stuff up above here and now, you know, everything is shifted down. So what I'm going to want to do um, is I'm going to right click on the table of contents and up here I get this update table and I'm going to click on update table and I only want to update the page numbers because nothing else really changed. Now had I, you know, you know, inserted a new heading or, um, or made some other significant changes or maybe renamed some of these, then I would want to update the entire table. In this case, I just want to do the uh, page number. So I'm going to hit OK and you'll see that the page numbers um, are now uh, are now different, and particularly the uh, this right here, the second level heading, which I moved to uh, from page three to page four, um, and I'll show you. See here, it's now on page four, and um, if, if and the ops and the opposite is true, if we were to um, let's say we were going to change it back here. Um, and we wanted it to be a, um, and we wanted to put it back where it was or we're deleting something. So now a header is, uh, so national and inter international, the national and international level, second level heading is now on, back on page three. Again, I, I simply right click um, and I can either update field here or I can update field there. So we'll do down here this time. So I'm going to update field. You get the same options. I'm going to do update page numbers only. I'm going to hit OK. And if you'll notice, um, now that I've done that, you're back to uh, table three, uh, right where it belongs. And uh, remember, you may need to change the font size if you don't have uh, Times New Roman uh, 12 point font. Uh, double space set as your default. Um, then you may need to go back in there and uh, change that. Well, I hope this has helped. Um, please let me know if you have any questions or concerns, and uh, hopefully this will make your lives a little bit easier as you prepare your uh, draft paper for the M6A2 group project assignment. Uh, thank you, and have a good day.